Absolutely amazing. The, the amazing commentary of uh, South African talent is what you're hearing there. We gave you in studio the former coach of the Springbok alongside him, you know, the front line and the back line of the former Springboks and Lawrence Sapaka, who joins us today. But what you were hearing there is the beautiful voice of Rene Swart, who joins us now, rugby commentator. I listened to that, Rene. And alongside South Africa, I had a lot of questions to ask, to answer to a lot of people. Because in that broadcast, South Africa versus Ireland, Rene Swart, doing the commentary for the SABC, he would go in in Tswana, change to English, come out the other side in Afrikaans. You are diversity personified of what this country is, Rene. And I appreciated you more than ever when I listened to you on television on a Saturday. Thank you so much for everything you do. Andy Day, I, I really appreciate um we must be humble. It's 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 our South Africa. And as long as we can uh, communicate, it's I think it's one of the biggest things that we should do in this country is communicate. And the only way that we can communicate is through language. Oh, he's with us now, uh, commentator for rugby in South Africa and of course here at the SABC Rene Swart, but he's not alone. Um Lawrence Sipaka is also with us. Lawrence, welcome back. It's been a while since you're Metro FM. A uh, match that we're going to be speaking about, a Pool B match, is what we're going to start. South Africa Island, it ended 13-8, very small margins there. I heard everything you had to say in Studio Lawrence. Now that you've had time to think about everything, what is, what, what, what is your, your, your post-thought on that match? Yeah, evening, Andy Le, and uh, your listeners as well. René, good evening, my dear. Good evening, sir. For two hundred lessons, come in for it. Okay, get that trailer, get that trailer, start. Then I'll come for the Afrikaans lessons. Yeah, the no idea. I must say, listen, uh, actually, obviously, it's difficult when you walk in that match. Emotions are a bit high, and you're trying to hit the spade on the top of the head sometimes, and then. When you take time to reflect and check, that game was an arm wrestle one and a half. I think South Africa won the arm wrestle. They just forgot the oak up at home. The street was missed. I think it was won by the scrummers from mm. Ireland. I think that's what those guys who actually won that game for them. On a few simple things, really, if you look at it, and it's not far to go, just the management of the ref, that's where they actually hit it. But everywhere else, I think we had them pretty good in every direction. But there was just no street was when they come to managing the ref and getting those 50-50s going for them. What does this then say about South Africa moving forward? Because, I mean, when you're going to be playing the, 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 the top one tier nations, you're going to be getting uh, tougher matches, more physical matches, matches that need you to be a lot more streetwise. When you look at the p penalties conceded uh, that we conceded versus what they did, they were a lot more clinical in that way for us, Lawrence. No, listen, they were clinical. I think we also, first half, they might have had better chances in the first half. We actually survived very well in that first half, but when it came second half, they, we had them on the ropes for certain times. I think that's when they clearly the experience of those scrummers really came to properly for me because how they manage and play in the right areas. And just milk a penalty. I mean, remember in a rock situation, you are told as a player, roll east to west, never mm. north and south. Mm. And that come up would literally block the way of a player attempting to go east to west and stay there and look at the ref in the eye and ask, uh, and how am I supposed to play this? Mm. Normally, none of the refs will normally say, don't try and milk it, play the ball, it's available. And uh, he didn't do that from the on. He had a good game there, ref. I think that's way. Uh, I mean, this game is played at such margins. That game is one of those that margins are so thin. You really had to find something in the silver lining to really get a, a, a punch about that. Because they play similar styles. They're pretty physical. They try to break it. Yeah. And they try to break and go as far as they can. They play on the edge. And they actually go as long as they can as well. They're both the teams. And it was very difficult to really distinguish how these really going to actually break each other. I mean, that game was a tussle. And honestly, if we really look at the fact if everything gone to according to plan, and obviously, the one thing that didn't come to the party today, someone that didn't have the right boots. I think our kickers, both of them, didn't have the kind and, of And boots. I want to get into that, Lawrence. <laughs> don't precede me on that one. Good. Don't precede me on that one, because I want us to have a, an in-dale conversation on that, because I've got a bit of a theory on that. But uh, let me go back a little bit here, Renee, because you were on the air with me when we spoke about the 15 having come out and the replacement. Now, in retrospect, did we go with the right 15 and replacement did we go with the right people in the right positions from the onset to fight an island? I think we did. I think we, 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 we did the right thing. As Lawrence has said, 
And I can't agree with you more, Robert. I think we weren't streetwise enough, uh, specifically for this fact. But the, 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 the team that went, or the 23 men that we had there, mm. I think they were capable of doing the job. They were, uh, if you can just look, when Malarva started, started getting uh, a problem on his side, and uh, which we were actually very lucky at a stage that the, 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 the sideline ref didn't see that. Uh, we, when we put up the, our replacements at that specific stage with Ox and Chen, then I think we, we dominated again. We, 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 we did do enough in a certain sense to have won this match, but we weren't, and, our, and, and, and the word was, uh, or the word is, streetwise. We were not, we didn't, we couldn't get it off, and, and we, we couldn't manage the ref, as Lawrence has said. That's absolutely like that. Well, Lawrence, what do, you, what, do, what, do you, what, do you, what do you take that down to, the fact that we couldn't manage the ref? No, listen, sometimes, you know, when you, 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 you meticulous in your planning, you want to do everything to the T. I, I'm not saying Faf is not streetwise, but he probably in his mind, he didn't have time to be playing games. He had more set of things in his mind to think about getting a service to Libok as much as possible. But remember in rugby games as well, uh, most good rugby players, a good rugby players, sometimes we've got those tricks that the coach can never give you or can never teach you something that you actually pick up along the way, that you actually have it with you, that you can do within the game plan, within the law, you can actually do to the T. But I suppose in that game, they were so focused on their plan that the focus sometimes, it stays within that box. And like I said, I mean, probably if they had to learn something out of this ref, is to try and figure out what kind of ref do they have on the day. I mean, Ranzi should have known this. He's been dealing with refs for a long time. Mm. He should have known their psyche in a way. And I think as well, this one, I think the players, it's not him. Remember, he's also in trouble with the ref. He cannot get too involved. But he knows so much about them. I'm sure they would have touched on it. So he's the kind of ref who's like this, is like this, is like this. And uh, when you play the game, I mean, there's kind of refs that would normally tell you, say, listen, uh, you can't fool me. I see what you're trying to do. Let go. But uh, like I said, in a game like that, I'm sure the ref also didn't want to be the main in the middle that actually decides such an epic match. Sort of forget about what has happened on the rugby field. He's really trying to keep it inside of the thing clean as possible. Hence, when they were milking the penalties, they were not wrong. He had to apply the law to the team, which he did. We just didn't use those opportunities as well to play the law. It's not dirty, it's not ugly, but you actually can't actually make him away of the situation that you're not happy with. Without being an unruly or unsettling to him as well, they did it very subtly. Look him in the eye and look down and, you know, make him make a decision. You know, not come down his throat. I mean, that's what the captain is on the field for. But then, the that's where I'm going to go there to say, that's where I'm going to go then to say, Sia coming off, I think it was the 51st minute that he came off. And, and just general, when you look at some of the subs that were made and the replacement coming on, did we make the right substitutions with the replacements at the right time and taking out people like Sia in the 51st minute when it was a match that needed to be won, you know, with the ref as well, Renee? No, that's... that's... Uh, sorry, yes, Renee, sorry. Uh, okay. um, uh, remember, remember, Raz is always said that the Springboks have got a captain, which is the team captain, which is Sia. But they've got leaders within the group that at any time required that they stand up, they must stand up. That didn't change. I mean, if you look at how Sia was playing, he emptied the tank within the time he was given. He's probably one of the guys whose hips were not on half half shoulders. He was hitting people backwards. If you pick up on his tackle every time, it's really will see that he's been hit backwards in a context situation. And the work rate getting around. Remember, the Irish are very smart. They know how to manipulate space and move the ball as quickly as possible to certain areas. I couldn't understand where the energy was coming from from him. So you understand his focus mm. as well as to make sure he leads by example. Because there was no time to be lecturing people where to go, where to come and stuff like that. I mean, that's how they operate. So people, like, for instance, departments, they've got captains of departments. The scrum captains, the lineup captains. The captains for everything. So everyone needs to play their role. And his role is to manage their life. I think it's maybe something. At halftime, you should have actually gone and said, listen, I'm looking at this. Can you have a look a bit closer? He could have done that. But like I said, his focus was so intense in terms of, you know, trying to make sure the Springboks 
have got a front foot opportunity in every time they get. You cannot blame for that. That's what sometimes you learn from games like this. And you tend to learn more from losing games like this than winning. Because Ireland would be worried. They wouldn't want to meet us again. Because they probably had their best foot forward and they almost came short. If we had a different kind of boot, we would have been eight points, 11 points up. I mean, we would have been, you know, literally talking a different ball game. We probably wouldn't be complaining about certain things at this point in time. Mm. But they are worried because they know in their heart what the Springbok brought and probably can bring more if they really just clap on a few things that they did draw on the day. Renee, we spoke about the 7 1 you and I just before we went off the air when the squad was announced. In retrospect, now, did it work out? I mean, when you look at the criticism around the world, uh, many labeling it as perhaps the reason why the match was even lost, not enough uh, uh, on the bench to win you the match in the second half because of the split that you chose. No, I don't think I don't think that it it had such an effect on the match and the match result as as such. Uh, uh, and in retrospect, I think it could have been it could, we could have had another another backline player in there. But although I think all of the guys that were there really did the job that they, that they were uh, there for, and, and the replacements as well. I, do not, I, I, I don't want to criticize the 7-1 split specifically. I think it was just overdone with. Uh, the 7-1 the split still worked for us. Mm. But it, it, it's just a question of how we applied that, that final touches, those, those that could have changed the score in totality. I mean, I'm not talking about uh, the criticism the South Africans. Most of our people are criticizing Libok. It's not on the kicking only. Yes, we need a kicker. We cannot, we can't get away from that. But the main thing is that last try, it was, I mean, it was a meter from being a try, and then it would have been level. The scores would have been level, even if we couldn't kick it. You, you know, that finish off, I think that was the thing that we really we really missed. And when a guy like Kwaha Smith came on, he was heavy on the loose ball. He did very good. And the same with, with, with uh, Van Staden. So I, I don't think where we, at a certain stage in the fight, really lost that loo loose ball control. We regained it with our replacements, but we couldn't, we couldn't force it off to finish. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll go into the Leibach matter. We'll go into the points that we left on the turf there because there were points left with the boot on the turf. And my conversation, and Lawrence knows this, I asked this even during uh, the Romania game to say, surely Mani Leibach starts in this game so that he can get the knot out of his knee, so that he can get the kicking right. Because that is a match where you would have had five, six, seven, eight opportunities to kick. And, you know, if you miss a couple there, wouldn't have meant as much as it did against Ireland. We'll have that conversation. But remember that the football action does not stop this week with some tasty domestic cup fixtures and all the big leagues back in full force. Rugby World Cup is heating up as well with the risk-free bet still on the table. Place any bet for the box to win the World Cup and get your money back if they don't. It's simple, easy and effective. Don't forget Betway's Top Up Tuesday where you get extra just for topping up today. All this and more only with Betway. It is a 30 after the hour, 6, about to go 31 on the mighty Metro FM. Give us a call. The guys are here. Lawrence, as well as Renee, would love to take your calls and your questions and uh, whatever thoughts that you might have about the Springboks in particular. 86 0 is the number. WhatsApp on 60 You're on the biggest platform for all things sport in Southern Africa. The award-winning Sports Amplified with Andy. I'm not saying so. It's the awards. Every year we get best show. It's for a reason because we get people like Lawrence, we get people like Renee who add such value to any conversation. Lawrence, you wanted to have this conversation, so let's have it. Manny Liebach, my thoughts had always been, after especially watching that first game, I thought, second game, we're playing Romania, it's a game that we're starting with uh, an all new 14, let's get him in there, put him as part of that, let him get a kick, we're going to get at least six, seven uh, uh, tries in that. We're going to get a lot of penalties in that. Have him in that game and let him just work the knot out and kick. Peter de Villiers uh, said, no, he's a big player. He shouldn't be on there. I think you are of the same thought. What do you think now? No, no, I still, I still stick to that. Remember, uh, you'll find that these guys, sometimes the captain run, odd captain run, then they will go and try to train at the same time they play. But generally, when he actually puts in the hours to get the kicking, he's not usually on the same time. We've been speaking about this in studio. 
There's something happening in France. I mean, you probably would have known this. The, the, the air moves differently than it moves at night. So guys are really the ones who are getting it right. It's probably a guy you don't even have on the top of your tongue at the moment. I'm looking at stats as a guy you probably just on the top of your head who thinks is kicking good at the moment in the rugby World Cup. Who do you think it is? Thanks if I ask you that question quickly. I've got a name. But I want you to tell me on the top of your head who looks I'm, sharp. I'm, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the match that we played and say, hey, Johnny did well. Johnny Sexton? Yeah. And on Johnny Sexton, guess where he's sitting on the list I'm looking at currently? Where is he and sitting? He's there. I mean, Paul is another guy I told actually looks excellent in front of Paul. He single-handedly carried England to where they are currently and the confidence they got. But they currently lying six and seven. <laughs> Behind oh, because Johnny Sexton is sixth at the moment with 93% and seventh is George Ford mm-hmm. of England. But we languishing right at the bottom. Money Leibok is 23rd and then you've got uh, Damien Villains at 17. So we are worse off. What if you put Money Leibok in a game like that so he can feel it during the game, during the air that you're talking about. He gets to kick during the pressure of the game as well. That's Lawrence's thought. Let me hear from uh, 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 um, Renee here. Renee, what are your thoughts? I, I I was at the same thought when we spoke last week. I said the the, the main thing was Marnie, his, his play at fly half is good enough. We didn't play him for the Romania game because the game plan was more to if any penalties we got, we went for to the sideline. Mm. We tried to score, score goals. Yes, it's true what you say. He could have had practice in, in kicking at, at goal. Uh, for, for uh, during the, the the conversions, which we also didn't do that well. In. But again, uh, if you are a Springbok in a big game like this, and your your fly half play is of the standard of what Marnie was when we played Scotland, I think you 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 yes, with one eye we must look at the kicks and go, but uh, you you know he had a, a, a game like this doesn't give you an opportunity to practice a mm-hmm. test match if it's romania if it's georgia if it's if it's namibia it's not a practice game it stays a test game so i i still I, yes i'm i'm actually half thought about this of of thinking yes we should have played mali and and have him some having have a lot of kicks in, at the romania game but on the other side that wasn't his task he wasn't he wasn't selected because at that specific stage, we needed another type of play that we wanted. Well, let's take a look at what the stats say. And uh, it's the same thing that uh, Lawrence is looking at, which is the goal-kicking success after round three. South Africa, you've got uh, Damon Willemser, who's kicked seven attempts, missed two. Right? Then you go to the bottom, Fab de Klerk, eight attempts, missed five. Mani Liebok, eight attempts, missed five just not good enough at this level especially when you move forward in this competition where the margins are small i want to talk about what do we do next as far as the kick is concerned right but lawrence i think we owe it to ourselves to 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 illustrate why money libok yes the kick hasn't been coming right but why he's important for this team one of the best uh, line kickers that we have and possibly one of the best in the world. I mean, absolutely, every time you watch him do that, you say, how are you that accurate? How are you that good at it? But what are some of the things that he brings in to the game? Listen, um, this is a great opportunity, actually, to slot him in. I mean, when he always, before he got injured, his boot was actually very shiny. Um, are we talking about Pollard here, right? And at this point in time, in terms of game time, you need game time. But as to where they play him, though, it's going to be very tricky. Because Libo, this game, I don't think he needs to play. He needs to practice. I mean, practicing is like playing golf. You need to actually get those, those mileage in, in terms of rhythm and how you strike the ball at different times as well. is very important. But you actually don't want to play the risk of getting your front runner at 10 injured in a game like in Toronto. It's going to be a critical game. And things tend to happen there. But what so, a so time. Let, let me understand this, Lawrence. Are you saying... Coming. You saying Tonga game? You sit money off again? You sit him out again? No, yeah, I would sit him out. There's a bigger risk in getting him injured in that game than trying to get him to practice kicking. Kicking he can practice. He can even practice while they're warming up with the other guys. He can not be in his number one in his moment. He can be striking the balls like with the guys who are going to be playing on the game just to get that feel. Get that because he only needs if they can kick these guys. They're just missing their rhythm. 
there's something in their makeup and how they actually line up to kick the ball. That is off. They need to find that. I don't know who they're going to speak to. I'm no expert in terms of how they can get it right. But it's just kicking. That's not on the tee. And I'm not talking about kicking. And the person who's probably got there's about three players in the whole tournament currently who are sitting 100%, Havili, uh, Matsuda from uh, Japan, and uh, Ellen from Italy. And those guys, we don't know what they do. Maybe we must have like a, a fly in their makeup as to how they go process into getting that. Do they have a coach? I mean, we're talking about you need a, a specialist coach who's going to focus on the micro things that we don't tend to see as people from outside, what is the missing and all of that. We've had them before, but for some reason why we don't have them this big, I don't know. But they need to find something because that is going to become key come final if you're not planning on scoring tries left, right and centre. Yeah, because I mean, the Johnny Sexton we were up against has had 15 goal attempts, only missed one. Rene, uh, let's talk positively now, looking forward to this Tonga game. But but uh, before that, there's, there, there's a... And somebody called in here and asked, and I said, I can't wait to ask the guys this because I don't think that's the South African way. I don't think that we work that way. The question was, are we already calculating who we want to meet between France and New Zealand? Is that then feasible? Like I say, I, I completely disagree with this line of thinking. But is it then feasible to say a loss against Ireland uh, and coming second because it looks like France will win their they, 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 they group A pool there? Is it feasible to say the guys were like, hmm, this is a match we can lose. We don't have to beat Ireland and come out tops and possibly meet New Zealand again? No, I don't think. Uh, I, I, I think there's a lot of South Africans who think that way. Uh, it, it, look, it, it is a possibility. That it, but would it be better? Uh, that's the main thing. We need, we need a psych, the psychological advance of always winning. Uh, I, I don't think that anyone on, in the Springbok team or anything that there was a strategy to lose this game. All we can say, and which is which is very South African, is to say we lost the game, but we're not out of it as yet. I am. I am. When when if if we wanted to throw the game and lose it, then we should be worried much more where wherever we end we end it. Because what would happen if? And I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. But if, if we start saying throwing games, if you get Ireland and Scotland playing and Scotland beating Ireland because we didn't get a bonus point against Scotland, what would happen then? Then, So I don't even want to go on that track. But yes, to be a South African, say, uh, I think it was all right. We lost, uh, but it wasn't that bad because we will now be meeting France rather than New Zealand because that was the argument that I had with somebody who said, New Zealand is not going to lose three three big games in a row, mm. uh, and and uh, it's an argument. It's a it's maybe a view, but I don't think that the the Springbok focus and the focus of the South Africans in the, it was in that way. We played to win the game. Lawrence, it it, 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 I, I, it, it just didn't happen. I, I I I like I saw this conversation. I heard this conversation. I didn't want to entertain it until it really grew legs to say maybe we're thinking of, of that quarter, maybe we're thinking of who to play. But surely, not the South African way, not the Springbok way, definitely not those two coaches' name. No, I also agree. I don't think those guys went in there focusing who they're getting next. I think for them, they were wanted to test themselves against the best as to gauge where are they in their preparation, in preparing to actually come on top of this tournament in totality and the kind of exercise they wanted. I think both teams actually got, and there's a lot of uh, war homework that they need to do to prepare, making what do they actually do better going forward. But in that thing, you need to plan who you're playing, you don't play. But i actually more happy with this result than actually having won. Because like I said, Ramir, the All Blacks, the, the chances of you repeating what you did to them before, there's not a likely thing. They really will have to come. They'll try to the kitchen sink at you to make sure mm. you don't embarrass them twice in the kingdom of Sonia. So I think we've got a better chance. Well, there is another match, of course, uh, that we still need to play uh, in our pool B. Tonga is up next, ranked 15th in the world versus uh, South Africa. I think uh, third is where we are now after that island game. Lawrence, how do, we, how do we begin with this one? What is the plan for this one? What is the execution for this one? Yeah, no, this is a game that we actually cannot take lightly. So remember those Polynesians would like to take a scalp. They know the chances of actually progressing is not much, but if they can take a scalp, 
they'll be very motivated to actually take something out of this game. The box really needs to come guns blazing, be prepared, focus on the minor details so that the bigger picture can look much better. I mean, it starts forward, it starts with the lineup, it starts with the clinical at the right time. So just be precise as well, because remember, the collision will be massive, but you know the box loves mm. more than the collision, so certainly they'll be up for that battle. That's what I'm saying at the same time. They should raise the guys that are important currently going forward, give them the, the trenches and the opportunity to come in and claim a state. I mean, we've seen now claim and um, Achilles name and lifted their hands against that Romania game and actually earned themselves an opportunity to play in a big game. So it's possible in a game like that for guys to actually stand up and be given an opportunity to go forward. I mean, uh, it's the horses for courses, but it's in the same structure. You need to make sure that you put your best forward in the team dynamics to make sure the team goes forward. They need to polish on their ability and their game plan, their skills and their mind crucial. I think one area as well we need to really focus on, try to keep the ball as much as possible. That requires, though, that we need to be very clinical at the right time. Because that's also one area where Ireland, I think, might have caught us. Fourth, five, fourth or fifth phase at the right time became a bit dodgy. Is you going to keep the ball or not? So those are the areas they can focus on doing. Listen, show the teachers thing. Let the guys run. Because it's very important to test as well those that need game time. To just get those voice boxes and actually get going to make sure when they get an opportunity to get in the crunch match, they don't crumble. Hmm. Rene? Yeah, I just want to go back a little bit and, 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 and say, before I get to the Tonga, my view on the Tonga game, uh, uh, Lawrence, I can't agree with you more. In my heart, I also feel like you. I'm, I'm a little bit more happy that we are playing where we will be playing. Uh, it, it, when I say this, I, I think we've got we've got the number of France, uh, and and um, as I said, there there are big arguments about this. But uh, and this is a little bit uh, t- uh, tongue in the cheek when I want to say, you know, the, the in commentary the the late Kevo Manyapelo, uh, who was uh, a top commentator, had mm. a saying. That is saying of therefore. Now we we say it in rugby. rugby There is not if we because in kebe mamani analiditeiro in kebe le rangwa. So if I should translate, you can tell no, me. No, no, but, no. No but, translation needed there. Uh, uh, no, all it says is if if my my auntie had beard, she would have my been uncle. my uncle. Mm. So, uh, but it's it's a question of that we we sh- we shouldn't, uh, and and that's why I'm saying I'm saying it tongue in the cheek. Uh, we 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 did a lot in this game. We we played uh, according to what we did. We couldn't we couldn't finish off. We couldn't finish it like we should have done it. But uh, I. I, I I personally, I feel like Lawrence. I'm not that sad that we will be playing France rather than playing New Zealand. I don't want to go out and, and choose sides, but I, I'm not that sad on that. Coming to the Tonga game, we, uh, Lawrence, you can't be, you can't disagree that we should come out guns blazing. We should, where we broke the record of 13 minutes and I think 11 seconds, getting the, bo- the bonus point against Romania. I think we must we must focus on that. We must we must hammer them, and we must try and do. I'm not saying it's going to be the same. It's not the same type of team, but it's it, we will come out guns blazing. We must choose the right players to do this because it's going to be physical. It's going to be very physical against Tonga, and but if we can if we can do our thing in the beginning, we're going to break them, and then we can do when then we can do our game and go back to a game plan type of thing where we we, we, we focus on the set, set pieces and, and do the best that we should do for the back line to, go, to, get, to get good ball. Renier speaks about choosing the best 15, um, but we've seen what we've done in this competition when we're playing so-called lesser teams, right? Are we going with the strong 15, which we saw um, uh, against Scotland, which we saw against Ireland? Or are we going Romania style, where we're making a lot of changes and we're singing Mabimpi, we're singing Andre Pollard, and perhaps giving those people a run and resting the money, Lee Box? Lawrence? No, I agree with you as well. Remember, 
I mean, the best players, it's not necessarily you as good as your last game. So the guys who are basically number one choice currently need to be looked after. There's, I mean, the squad is big. And you've got physical players that are hungry within the squad. Which, I mean, for instance, now I'll even take you off the rails and say Mondambi must also be given a break. He's a soul. Mm. Proper worker in that setup. Yeah. He needs to be rested. Give those other two guys uh, in, um, uh, what's his name? Um, the flanker converted to actually have from, a proper from started. Not started, from started. From started. Not from not from the bank, not from the start. He can come on in the bank like they did last time, but have him actually have a proper scrum against big guys. Because I think also I felt when they came on, the scrum became slightly unstable. That's a question of just practicing, just getting the hang of things after a long time. It's not as natural as it would be when you were doing it for a year in and year out for a couple of years, like Bonambi and the likes of Mark. So they need a bit of practice. So to come against a team that probably scrums also very well, it's very important to give those guys, let them have that heat, enjoy that heat, and actually find their way and those hook them handles. When they come to, obviously, the prompt is not an issue, but give those hookers an opportunity to have a proper run. Like, you know, get, get a bit of a physical confrontation with those big fellas and to make sure that they get good practice. So that thing is not bad as coming. I mean, there were some big boys in that team. So that would be a great exercise to make sure whatever their plan, long-term plan they have, actually pays off when it comes. I mean, rugby is a very funny game. It's not a contact sport. It's a collision sport. In collisions, accidents happen that people get injured at the awkwardest of times. So it's very important that they have that in mind and make sure that everyone, they cover their bases from the coach's point of view. But in terms of players, I'm sure the players wouldn't even disagree with me at this point in time because that's how hungry they are to just get it run. That's how actually special this tournament is. When you get an opportunity, you put your best foot forward by, you know, not by hook or crook, but, you know, you try to do your best to make sure that you put your team in a better position. Well, I mean, that loss did cost us a place. Uh, We have dropped to third. Um, you know, with Ireland and France now, the top two nations in the world. France uh, uh, jumping over us to get to that second position with New Zealand in fourth and uh, Scotland in fifth. Uh, England, Wales, Fiji, Argentina and Australia completing the top ten there. Let's go to you guys now. We're going to play some of your voice notes and take some of your calls as well and hear what you've had to say. Drop us a voice note on 060-552-7303 now. Yeah, Andy Les Mandilake here in Deep Slot. Uh, Andile, I said it before and I will say it again, I rather meet any Northern Hemisphere side than meeting New Zealand in this World Cup. Uh, even if they look like they are not in good form, but they are old enemy and they play better rugby than any Northern Hemisphere side. About the game, uh, Andile, I don't know if it was on purpose to lose that game. Beside uh, 11 points that was left in the game, um, I think maybe three tries. Uh, that were left uh, because of the mistakes of our forwards. There was an early engagement, maybe twice by Oxenche, uh, and there was a skewed throw by Dion Foray on the second half. All these things were five meters away to the scoring line, so I don't know. Hmm. Hello, Metro FM. Hi, I'm a uh, just land, uh, man. Just land, uh, man. Uh, come with bank. Hey, get a under Palaco under Palaco with Udi Lepila Wagos for Hey, money Liboko Rishi. The last time I qualified the Gawaga penalty. Bonner missed 11 points. You youth, Gawagala Mali Liboko, but I Nagina experience. I love under Palaco Tamurtas on our Dragwavia. Just then the Mompomalanga Moit Bank. Dango Ma. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Ex Andy Landile, Jimmy Mago, the busy one of Mazebe, Le Para Haringhama Para, Ma Ah, Island, they were so beautiful, defensive, Monoana, Joe, Naba Defender, well as a team, passing Yawana was so well. Now I think we are avoiding New Zealand, I don't know why, Ma Ah. But what about the penalty? The penalty is already missing. Yeah, there's something wrong. Jimmy Maga, the busy one of Mazebe, Dangi Ma Ah, Ma Ah, Udimiri said, Dugi, Wago Esco, Mo, Kerjo Vecho. <laughs> uh, let's go to Malose. Malose is out in Pretoria. Malose, I've got Lawrence. Uh, I've got Renier here. Hi. How are you? No, I'm good, man. Talk to me. I'm good, man. Andy, I think wrong show yesterday. I wanted to comment on this rugby. And, Hence, uh, I yeah. said wait till <laughs> Tuesday because that's when my heavyweights <laughs> come in. Talk to me. I think I was eating. Andy, look, uh, if you are designed to win the World Cup and you are trying to avoid a team, 
you're going to meet the team anyways if that team is strong enough to reach the finals. If we're avoiding the team now, and that's what we played to do, we run a risk of uh, playing the same team in the final and losing the final. It's more painful to lose the finals. Uh, I'm not saying any other game is not important. It's more painful to lose in the finals when you've gone all the way and you like, to only lose to a team that you tried to avoid. Get the team, fight the team, eliminate the team, give it your best shot, and then be in the finals knowing that you've eliminated all your biggest problems. And then, other than that, our penalty takers disappointed. But the game against Romania, we converted almost every penalty we got. So I'm just worried that uh, the penalty takers were not doing as good as we did against Romania and Italy. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Sam Let's Thank go to CC. CC is out uh, in Mpumalanga. CC, welcome. Is that CC gone there? Do we have CC? CC, hi. Hi, Andy. How are you? Ma'am, good, man. Talk to me. Good, good. Yeah, it was a, it was a great game uh, on Saturday. Yeah, you could tell it's the number one and the number two team playing. Uh, a couple of things that I've, I've, I, I think I've picked up. Uh, the money and Pollard issue it keeps coming up, and yeah, it's like now we're putting one against the other. For me, uh, a suggestion would be that there's actually room for the both of them in the team. For instance, if we could move Pollard to 12 and the money stays at 10, and uh, yeah, it would, it would actually is, is solve quite a, a few things because our center pairing. I'm not too happy about the center pairing that we, we keep putting putting out, uh, especially yeah uh, on, on Saturday. I think that hold hold that are, thought, Sissy. Hold that thought because I want to hear Lawrence's uh, um, <laughs> uh, thoughts on, on 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 what you suggested there with the hundred Pollard and the money, Lawrence. Uh, I think this is on the money very much. Just you know your rugby. And uh, if you're going to follow Pollard, Pollard is actually an inside center in his younger days under 20. He's a machine, he knows how to operate in that position as well. They don't rate them to go head to head. Um, if the coaches need to create depth, they can actually allow that opportunity. He can play this weekend at 10, and then the next game they can slot him in at 12. When he gets tight, the lender can come in and finish the business. I mean, that's how the system they can operate. It's really not that complicated. They don't have to play as these two players against each other. Remember, they need to be head strong now. This is a sort of team mentality. We very slow losing. We don't like to lose. Hmm. But sometimes when we lose, we get too emotional. We don't think they I think Booty is on the money there. And I think the letter South Africa must listen to her. In that lady's got a rugby win. I can't wait to have you what? next week, Tuesday. I know you put in all the time. Rene, you want to add something? Yes, I really, I think, I think it's a very good idea. I think it's it's a thing that, that the Springbok team should look at, uh, because as as Lawrence has said, uh, Andre, well, Andre needs the game time in any case in, in the Romania game. And then the second thing, uh, the, 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 if you compare uh, Andre with with Esterazen, I think we will still have that big defence in midfield, and and um, play him. With, in a in a big game, the next big game where we, where we need a proper goal kicker, uh, and he needs the game time against Romania. I wanted to add that on the Romanian game. I think it's a it's a it's a workable thing uh, for the South African team. Gents, uh, you and I we're together. I think uh, it's, it's on Sunday. Um, let me see, Saturday, 30th of September, 2022, Argentina versus Chile. You can catch on television myself alongside uh, Lawrence, uh, Peter de Villiers and Conrad. And of course, in the commentary, you can catch Renier there. Guys, we can't wait till the weekend. More rugby, more of you, more of your brilliant, brilliant analysis. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you very much. Pilla, pilla. And so on.